Extreme Chronicles, Chronicles of the Extreme, like Narnia times one million. ECW went out of business 15 years ago. A lot of stories are uh, told, some are edited. I know myself, like Rob, he just was at WWE. I know myself. Talking oh. about uh, ECW, and then when you leave there, you're like, man, I wanted to say this, man, I wanted to say that Bubba was fat on the Bubba DVD, or they may edit it. So here we're gonna do go, Start with everybody's stories from day one till the end. These are stories that Even back then I was, I was like that. Like I had my priorities with the business. A and smart so, business. So Sabu was like, did Paul call you yet? I'd say, huh? Paul, he's supposed to call you on Tuesday. He didn't fucking call you. God damn it. I'm say, why? He, he, I talked to him. He's supposed to call you to bring you in this weekend. Motherfucker. I'll, I'll, I'll call you back. He'd hang up and he'd do that like once a week for a while. And uh, remember the Lycra shorts that we all, you know, guys used to wear the spandex right, shorts. Yeah, yeah. This uh, girl's bent over, long black hair. And I was like, holy cow, who's this coming in? Pops head up, turned around, it was hooving two girls. I was like, what the hell's wrong with me? I like Mexican men. <laughs> Not you know who I wrestled right there? Oh, I... You wrestled Jericho and they oh. shit on the match. Oh, okay, I, I don't recall. It was Jericho's fault, I think. For sure. <laughs> and uh, there is no good out of Luis Piccoli passing away except for, and that's when I felt you and I really bonded. Um, was because most guys bond when, after they start working, but when Louis passed away, to me, you went the total other side. It was just that's it. And because I mean, seriously, man, you were bad. He was my safety gauge, and um, that was an experimental time for me. I was introduced to pills in the ECW dressing room. Right. Um, I remember them being in Japan too, but um, I remember one time um, I wrestled Chris Jericho. It's a Lulu Temple, I hyperextended my knee. The next day we had, Sabu and I had the match where the, where the ring broke, Kimono Wanale is dancing up there. And um, I still was working for Japan until like 97 when Giant Baba died. And I did like another tour for Mrs. Baba. And then I continued over there for some other companies, you know. Right. I think it doesn't matter what you do, these people are gonna love you. <laughs> and I was like, what? No, I'm saying crotch him, he goes, these people are gonna be with you. You don't understand what you did last night. And he was right. It was a total different um, welcoming from that crowd and I never looked back. Like it was a very yeah. fucking big step up. And that's to awesome. My, yeah. Good old Paulie. That was when he I was, came, that was, he was the, the man night I became us. a superstar. Really? Yeah. And, um, it was it was really good, and I broke his nose. Nice. He said I saved He's him. He's still alive. He said I, I saved him some money because he couldn't do coke for a few weeks. <laughs> yeah. Um, I personally love working with Rob Van Dam. Uh, I've, we've probably had 100 matches, and uh, my crowning moment wouldn't be from ECW. Pile driver. That's the best pile driver ever. And then followed up by the worst super kick ever, <laughs> where I had the walking boot and I went to super. I went to do the Van Terminator and I missed, and you Van took Damn the bump. Man. Whatever, uh, Van Daminator, you took the bump, and people were like whoa. And the match was so. I love that match. It's one of my favorite. I also thought that was one. This was the '97 November. Yes. Remember that we remember was we much hit more than the every show. friggin' spot. I used to, I probably at the time, you know, because it was very competitive back then. You know, I probably did resent it to some extent. I wasn't losing sleep, but I was probably like, man, fucking, fucking Taz. I was probably like that. That we have legitimate fucking, you know, Taz. Taz resented that I was there taking his spot. He wanted to be the, him and Sim Sabu were building this big thing forever and ever. And then before they were gonna finally touch, I wanted to be big. It was so it was, different. I just, you know, I wanted to be part of that, and I wasn't on the card. So you know, I was like, well, fuck, you know, fuck this. I'll, you know, I'll go. They want me over there. You know, why, why would I turn that down for this to fucking uh, to not even be on the card? And then it was Paul who was trying to bring me back in off that ledge. And then he was like, what if I could do this? What if we told the fans to expect you on Monday night and everyone will assume you'll be on WCW, but what if I can get you on WWF television? It definitely was because that's WCW was off for me. Whatever it was, a two year, three year deal, whatever it was, he had to go compete against that. And I remember way back then, I mean, if this is 97, I'm only 26 years old at the time and only been wrestling, you know, fucking seven years or so. Right. Uh, but even back then, when Paul asked me, he said, What would make you happy? 
on a contract. Right. I was wrestling Jerry Lawler. I do not know, remember who you were wrestling at the second uh, pay-per-view. I know you were going into like the Mr. Monday Night, correct? And then the uh, there was an issue. Was it Road Dog didn't want to do a job for you? I didn't want to do one for him. Okay. And then there was another person who was like, well, if he didn't want to do a job, then fuck him. And then you walked. And then that killed the whole deal, pretty much. That's what I was told. Pretty much. Paul, <laughs> Paul kept it, all the pressure on me. You know, like the whole time. But again, we, also, he's, we don't know this. Right. But he's working both sides. Correct. And he's manipulating us. You're thinking he has you our, know, back, our best interest correct and he, he really looking back at it me and sabu and i both feel like he wanted us to burn bridges there and you're telling vince no i'm not doing something yeah <laughs> absolutely <laughs> because yeah. hey we had and i remember you saying this isn't i don't work here i remember it specifically why should i blah blah blah, blah. we're coming in here to do business but, and you guys don't want to do the right business, so it doesn't make sense. That's, that's exactly right. When I went to Paul for advice, all he would say is, it's up to you. You make the call. <laughs> if you say we're out of here, we're out of here. We'll grab our bags. What do you want to do? I'm saying, well, Big crates on the wheels. I find all the WWF titles, uh, the old Bob Backlund one, the green one. I found the white intercontinental title, so I stole it, right? And I go... Paul, look at the back. And he goes to the back, and under a towel is the white intercontinental <laughs> title. And this is before all, uh, like, licensing all that shit. And he's like, what did you do? Why did you do that? I go, dude, I love that title. I go, that was awesome. I go, they don't use it. I opened this thing. There was tons of titles there. I go, there are like five of them in there. And he goes, you have to bring it back. I'm like, fuck that. I'm not going back. So then the next week when we had to go back. You don't I, understand. Things are screwed. I'm screwing you guys over. <laughs> You're screwing me over. So then the next time we went, I brought a towel in with my bag and I smuggled it and I could have fired this It was gone bin. for the week then? Yeah. Wow. I, like the, um, the Taz would call him and say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill your boy next weekend, man. He's done. And I'd be like, what? Like there was so much of that. that you, there was that uh, Midtown flea market or whatever. Where, there was something where uh, I was just going to take care of him right there. You know what I mean? I, and, I, and I felt like... It, this wasn't, I felt like he needed more than just a smack. This was to prove, to knock him out off his pedestal. I really felt like he was going to have to be hurt really, really bad because I think looking back, it seemed like he felt like he was a God. Correct. Okay. Yes. And everyone seemed to put that over. Everyone seemed to feed into it. And I was just like, this has to stop because it's a problem right now for me. And, and then, you know, there was talk, 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 you know, see you this weekend. Then when we got there, he didn't want to fight. There was something personal that happened to him. And smack. Um, he stood up. I jabbed him. And I wanted to follow up so bad and knock him out of his boots. But he was just standing there like that. And he wouldn't fight. You know, come on, put your hands up. What are you doing? You know what we're doing. Where's this coming from? You know where this is coming from. Come on, I just smacked you. Let's do this. We went out. Bam, side. kick. And then landed on my feet on the floor. And he goes, well, damn, because we all talked about it earlier. There wasn't one person in the room that didn't think you could do it. <laughs> I think only you and Jeff Hardy have that uh, mystique that, oh, Rob, Rob could do it or Jeff could do it. You know, because my, uh, we'll talk about Spike Dudley before with Bam Bam. Spike was such a good wrestler, and you made Spike so much more credible. He was tough, tough guy. I remember watching you two guys work on Sometimes, a house. Sometimes, you know, boom, I'd throw him off instead of taking it. Right. I remember doing that with a big pile of chairs, throwing him. The more I think about it, like, I mean, I love Spike, always have, um, but I hadn't really thought about our matches in a long time, but right now while I'm thinking about it, it seems like I, like, he really took a beating. Oh, yeah. The whole time, yeah. Bam, bam. Uh, Their work, or about them trying to get their shit in and outshine you and all this. There's all kinds of emotions that go into something. It's not always just you know, uh, just both of us right. trying to have the best match we can and try to make each other look good. It's not always that, you know. There are there are selfish moments that we all have, and you not know, me, brother. Well, I'll yeah, take I don't, I don't give a shit things. anymore enough to be selfish. That's why, yeah. If, if you got to fight, if you got to fight to to be out to be there now. Fucking let them have it. That's how I feel right now. I've already been there. So that's, that's why I'm here instead of there. Exactly. Ooh. You and Jerry. Yeah. What made you so different? Um, Having these amazing matches, really. There, really, there, there, there's not an answer except for it just happened to be 
what the way that both of us just meshed. It was just the chemistry that came out of. If here's my match, top it, top it. The next match, who and if you couldn't top it, you didn't deserve to be there. That to me was that competitive edge. You know, hey, I'm in the main event. I got to follow all these guys. Okay, I may not be able to do it physically, but I'll do it with storytelling, or I'll do it. You split open <laughs> your, you That's split awesome. open your eyelid. And I remember like, Rob, are you okay? And you're like, yeah. And when you close your eye and your eye was still there moving. And I was like, oh my God, I think he needs stitches. But you got us the rings. I it was me. Know. It was Rob Van Dam. Oh, really? Yeah, that was my ring. Get out of town. Wow, bro. Yeah, Sweet. bought it for a thousand. I think I sold it. Um, TNN didn't seem to be the uh, the boost that we needed. Remember when Paul did that shoot promo on TNN? Yeah. And- well, the first episode we had, uh, he they were supposed to give them original content, and he did not like the show we did in Toledo, so he re-aired you versus Jerry Lynn for forty minutes, and he gave them original content for hello everyone I'm Joey Styles from Toledo and then he aired the pay-per-view so for me that was just like the best case scenario because again just like with the uh, invasion where, where we did the you know where the thing that we did earlier where ECW came into the uh, right. WWE's television it was getting ECW over on their on their stage in their spotlight, and uh, so that was that was great. Just like when I got the hardcore title, I felt the same way. I felt like I think one of my many death blows of when I was in WWE Creative from my whopping three weeks to a month. Uh, Hunter didn't have an opponent for WrestleMania, acting like the company's going to go out of business, and I was like, "What about Rob Van Dam? Like, he's not over enough." I was like, "Really? All those people with the signs, always chanting his names, and you know." Again, the business was up there still, started on down end, but every, you had a, you had thousands of signs every single night, and they're like, no, that's but they put Booker in. I mean, you've been my friend for a long time, but you know, thanking. Do you want to have our first kiss on cam? No, no but thank you for you. being there for a lot of my moments, because in WWE I wasn't happy, and uh, you gave me some of those cool moments where I got to be happy and be myself again. So. Good times. I uh, feel like I have to say something genuine and nice to you. No, too, you don't. Know. 420, bro. Always.